Hey guys, so today we're going to be making three geometric looping animations and we're going to be applying this in a poster format. Sketching and ideating movements is a really important part of the process of motion design. And when you are working with a client, you often produce these small vignettes which showcase motion behaviors that can be applied for various different treatments that are based off of conceptual reasoning. But what better way to use these small pieces to produce some sort of social media post or animation? So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing today. And yeah, I hope you guys learned something new as always. And I'll see you there. Just before I get into the tutorial, I'd just like to let you guys know that I do have a set of online assets that you guys can download. It's mainly Photoshop mockups and it's just meant to help elevate your work and just take it to that next level of professionalism. You can go check out my Gumroad in the description. Everything is free and publicly available for you guys to use and take advantage of. So yeah, let's get into the tutorial. So basically uh, what I'm doing now is I'm just drawing out some squares to essentially just be a quick guide just so I know where I am placing stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to drop the opacity on that and just lock them and then I can use that as a guide to just place my points and yeah, just kind of sketching stuff out um, and yeah. They'll all kind of start in the center and then we can kind of shift and move it in a different direction to create kind of this flexible shifting uh, shape. So now we've got them all set up. Uh, I just need to lock them onto the guides and I'm just going to turn on snap to guides and just make sure that everything's kind of aligned roughly. Uh, well, perfectly uh, using this grid. So yeah, I'm using a 2K square with a grid of uh, 120. So that's 2160 with a grid of uh, 120 with a few subdivisions. So yeah, just making sure it all starts perfectly centered. And now that that's sorted, we can just go and get our path and then set the keyframes, move along and just shift the uh, kind of point to somewhere interesting and snapping them all together like so and now we've got our keyframes there we can just move along and just repeat the process to create kind of a flexible approach but yeah this this animation it it's it's interesting I, I love making these little vignette kind of small looping animations that can then be applied across a poster or something like that and yeah this is actually quite a, a flexible uh you could you could kind of systemize this because you know it's just basically all the corners and then this this point that then uh moves across and that's that's the connection between all the geometry it's kind of typographic you know you could create some cool letters from that um but yeah, uh, just a couple more of these keyframes just to make it uh, last long enough. And then the final one, we're just going to put that to the original position just so it loops. And then we can just add our easy ease and go in our speed graph and just pull these in to the maximum just so that they're always uh, aligned. I like to do this because then you know that the peak is absolutely centered uh on that middle point so yeah and it, it looks quite nice when you add a bit of motion blur as well but yeah that's the that's the first one this is our second one so we're just going to be making a bunch of squares and just putting it in a checkered pattern so the, you'll see why we do this but essentially it's just so that it it uh creates an alternating invert and yeah, it inverts every other uh, tile, which you'll see. Um, but yeah, now we've got our set up. We're just going to put our background in. So that's now a solid kind of like uh, mask that we can uh, invert stuff. So we're going to call that checker. And then now we're making our smallest tile. So I'm going to make this 240 by 240 and just add a rectangle. And I'm just going to reduce the width a little bit. 
uh, by two or dividing it by two. So that's 120 and just making it a bit taller. And we're literally just going to rotate this. No keyframes, just rotating it by 180. So we can then go back into our main composition, drop this in. I'm just going to align it to the corner and add a repertile. And we're going to just extend this out to the width. Now what we can do is we can add a solid, uh, just drop in a, a gradient ramp, which is basically our displacement map for the effect. So I'm just kind of figuring out where I want the light and dark areas. So time displacement works on lightness values. So the lighter, the, uh, the lighter the effect, or sorry, the lighter the pixel, the uh, further ahead in time it's going to be. So just adding our mosaic so that everything's uniform across the tiles and just selecting sharp colors. Uh, yeah, this is where we add our time displacement. So just add an adjustment layer, time displacement, and then using that map to apply on our time displacement effect. And you can see the, the effect happening here which is quite nice. And then we can drop in our checker effect and then just use an exclusion mask. And this is where you get the interestingness because it's that contrast between the different tiles, which creates kind of like a shattered effect, which yeah, I really like. So basically what I'm doing at the moment is just finding the uh, looping point. So I'm basically going from 90 to, uh, to 70 degrees and I'm just finding that in the timeline so we can actually get it to loop uh, and then yeah it should yeah as you can see it loops nicely there and that's basically number two so that's cool uh, can now go into our third one so just yeah setting up our frame and here I'm just setting up some guides so just I know where to kind of place our points and yeah, I'm just placing that halfway and then half again, just so we can get those uh, that tiled effect or that grid effect. So yeah, for some reason, I don't know why, but guides don't seem to snap when I've got them both turned on with like grids and guides. They don't seem to work nicely together. But yeah, this is our first shape. So just setting a keyframe on the path, and then moving along in the timeline and just basically uh, shifting that or mirroring that shape. Um, so that it kind of flips from one side to another uh, and yeah just copying the keyframe across and then again and again just so that we've got enough in our timeline to create something uh, loopable like so and then yeah I'm just gonna essentially just like add some easy ease here and yeah again just pulling that in so it's going to be uh, the same across all of the those two animations the first one and this one so you can see it kind of working here and yeah now we just kind of duplicate it down and get get the effect we need so we, now we have a grid of them and uh, this is where we can yeah move it across and we can now add our null object. And I'm just going to put that in the top corner. I uh, basically add everything. Or just, I'm just going to link everything to that null object. Uh, now I'm just moving it across uh, just to the halfway point so it offsets and then I'm doing it one more time and this is where the uh, looping point is so uh, I'm just adding some easy ease and adding the same uh, kind of interpolation there just adding a little bit of motion blur and just seeing how that looks uh, we're just going to watch this and uh, let it render out 